Hello guys and welcome back to the Zane Investing. We are aware that ANC ripped twice in January and June of 2021. And if you examine the graph, you'll notice that the volume has been extremely stable since then. There was only one instance where volume reached approximately 600 million and the ANC share price rose approximately 165%. Now double that volume, more than double that volume occurred in June of 2021 when more than 2 billion in volume occurred. In addition, the share price rose approximately 700% in January of 2021. You witnessed the share price increase by nearly 1,000% on over 3 billion shares traded. Consequently, it appears as if the price moves higher as volume increases. Since then, naturally, the volume has been flat. A large number of orders are being routed to dark pools, and many retail investors do not have the funds that they initially invested in January and June of 2021, and market makers have considerable control over the options chain and the stock in general. If we bring in the drawings, we can see that there is a descending parallel line that acts as a resistance level. Whenever the price reaches this level, there are significant halts on the stock, which ultimately result in a decline. Now, however, these shifts are occurring with minimal to no volume. And the reason this is occurring, e, the reason AMC runs 150% with extremely low volume and they have to stop it, is because this pressure is still accumulating beneath the stock. What is occurring now is them. They are simply kicking the clock, letting time pass, and attempting to keep this in an endless loop. Now, however, even without volume, the algos have built up pressure behind the stock. The question then becomes, will AMC squeeze? Are you still in this play for this to squeeze? I wish to express my opinion on this matter. I would like to discuss some events that occurred in January and June of 2021, as well as some other events. Today, Adam Aaron came over. If you want to assist me, please click the like button. It's gratis. That's all I require. Similarly, click the subscribe button. Let's reach more people with this video before we begin the week. According to Stock Tracker, ANC has no shares available for borrowing, with a high high percent cost to borrow fee remaining on the threshold securities list for approximately nine consecutive days. However, more calls than puts are being bet on the options chain, albeit not by much, and short exemptions are piling up. At this level, mark makers, short sellers, and hedge funds are still monitoring this play and keeping it down by dumping short exempts on top of the buyer volume. Now, in addition to being on the threshold securities list, they must also cover the 17th of July, the T plus 35 settlement date. Some fails to deliver. And ANC is sitting at a relative low where retesting that low is almost at 383.70. And when that time comes, they will have some time to let this thing climb back up before kicking the can down the road once more. However, there is one thing that could potentially halt their downward momentum and that is the conversion reverse split lawsuit. On the 13th of August 2022, when AIP was issued, Adam Aaron tweeted the following. We discussed the topic. You omitted essential details. In January 2021, AMC issued shares, and the share price skyrocketed. Additionally, in May and June of 2021, AMC issued shares, and the share price skyrocketed, and the company ceased selling shares. In July of 2021, AMC began a long decline. AMC announced the return of Apes last week. Obviously, this makes no sense, right? Ape has been announced, so AMC is resuming production. This is not something he should have said in this context, and I realize it now, correct? If AMC is being diluted, this is a different story. However, if you invested in a different stock, you're blatantly lying to AMC's shareholders, right? Currently, not as a company, but as a share price. This would have been beneficial for Ape, if not for either party. Right? And the only reason he did this was to compel dilution after shareholders rejected his proposal. Ape closed at $0.68 the day before Adam Aaron announced the Ape conversion reverse split and dilution in 2022. And since that day, Ape has increased by more than 250% while the no-vote FUD has increased by at least 1,100%. Not a coincidence. Someone is terrified of voting affirmative. 
The fact that institutions and short sellers on AMC don't want to vote is somewhat suspicious. Yes, they have been opposed to it. They have attempted to delay it. Nevertheless, I discovered something from 10 years ago. It is an extremely ancient article. What is the question then? What is the result of stock dilution? What happens to the volume? And is the company taking advantage of you? Tell me which of the following three scenarios you believe we're currently in. These are instances. MoneyCorp desires expansion. They sell 90,000 shares at $1 per share. The funds are deposited at the same interest rate into the same bank account. The initial shareholders experience a change. There are no 100,000 shares for $100,000. Still $1 per share. No problem. This is the optimal circumstance. Money Corp sells 90,000 shares below the current market price of $0.50 per share. Are the original shareholders disadvantaged? Yes. It now has between 55,000 and 100,000 shares outstanding. Currently, each share is worth $0.55. The company has given new shareholders valuable equity. That is poor. Why did they not receive more money from those men? This is the exact case. Isn't the location a little bit modified? Why didn't Adam Aaron sell 8 for $11 if he forced dilution? Is a perennial question. Anyway, if you come down here, you will see that legally, if you own a portion of a business and they do something similar to Scenario 2, you may be out of luck. Consider that the other owners are likely to be similarly affected. Only new shareholders benefit. And unless the management that approves the deal is somehow giving themselves a sweetheart deal, it will be difficult to prove wrongdoing. On an individual basis, unless you own a substantial stake in the company, it is unlikely that you will file a lawsuit. Lawsuits are expensive. If millions of dollars are at stake, a substantial institutional investor or activist investor may file a lawsuit. But at best it will be ugly. The question is false, correct? Because this only leads us down a spiral. Is the purpose of the conversion reverse split to benefit retail and OG shareholders? It makes little difference if you voted yes or no. It will probably be approved. I'd like to point out, however, that there's something fishy about why he didn't sell at $11 and gave the new shareholders the benefit of the doubt. On the other hand, it states that you wouldn't file a lawsuit if you don't own many shares unless millions of dollars are at stake. With only 879 shares, Allegheny is obviously not risking millions of dollars. Okay, so someone must be responsible for this. Someone long says, listen, I have a ton of shares, but I don't want to come out and you know, screw over my hedge fund buddies out in the open and say that I am going to file a lawsuit because I don't want this to go through and I'll need you to do it. Prior to this rate hike cycle, the last time the 10-year yield was 4.06% was during the 2008 financial crisis when it was actually declining. Since 1980, the two-year and 10-year Treasury yields have never inverted without a subsequent recession. And on each occasion, the rates return to their previous levels. Do I lack something? What are your thoughts? Consider that the market will rhyme. It is the past. Please share your thoughts in the comments section below. Overall, that is what I have for you in the video for today. Check out the videos I uploaded over the weekend. Let's prepare for the upcoming week. I love you all.